Charlotte, and hello everybody. Uh, just like Charlotte said, I'm I'm super stoked to be here uh, and talk to you about connectivity and also putting an extra lens on um, what you're already doing around strengths. Uh, as Charlotte uh, alluded to, um, I came along to the Welling meetup when we could actually meet in person. Uh, and gosh, what a what a meetup it was! It was at BNZ. Thanks for hosting, Jill. And uh, by by crikey, there was a pretty impressive lineup. Um, you know, there was Cheryl Tansley who did a rap. So I won't be doing a rap today. Just to to give you a heads up, um, there was Prashant and Tony who also spoke. Um, so it was a pretty high bar actually when I when I came along. Um, and so yeah. It, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to do this in a slightly different format, um, but just like Charlotte also said, bear with me if I'm flipping between you know, slides and I'm going to jot some things down on, a, on my iPad. But what I really would love for you to do is, number one, I'd love to have, for you to have a pen, because throughout this, um, what I'm keen for you to do is reflect and make this interactive. Number two. Uh, would be fantastic. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, pop them in the uh, comments and we'll get to them as we shoot on through. So uh, any questions you've got, pop them in the comments um, and we'll answer those. Um, yeah, and uh, we'll, kick, we'll kick into it. Um, just, to, just to start off, in terms of the comments, why not um, say hi, but also jot down. I'm curious where in Wellington you are uh, given the fact that uh, you know we're, we've all just come out of level four, just jot down in the comments just to make sure it's all working. Which part of Wellington you're um, coming in from? So where are the comments? The comments, Christine, uh, are just at the bottom um, of your screen. You'll see a chat there, and you'll see it's flashing orange. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, All right. Sharing my, trying to share my screen with you. Yep, we can see your screen. Oh, great. Um, Amazing oh. to see so many people from around the region. Also, you know, Auckland and, oh, it's awesome. Thanks for being with us. Right. So, can you see this? Sure can. You see the notes as well, or just the um... just the screen? Oh, great! So, um, yeah, the fo focus for today really is around the building the connectivity piece and adding a new lens to what you're doing in Agile. Um, I basically uh, have been working with StrengthsFinder for close on the last ten years, and um, it's something that I've really added to my practice. I run a training and coaching practice here in Wellington. Um, and my key focus is really around clarity and helping people determine what it is that they do the best uh, individually and as part of the team. And so I've been working with organisations such as the Ministry for Primary Industries, Archives New Zealand, did some work with Weta Digital, and I'm really keen to do two things today. One is share some insights with you around what I've learned from doing training around strengths, um, but also really it would be great to get your comments and feedback, a uh, bit of reflection. I'm not an expert in Agile, so I'm, I'm keen to learn. I did do some research around it, um, and you'll see that through the presentation. Um, but yeah, just, just to, to hear a bit more about what you're doing um, in the agile world and how this ideally can slot into what you're doing. Um, I studied in Palmerston North. Um, I did uh, a master's degree in marketing and this is the Manawatu Bridge. Anyone put, pop your hand up if, if you've actually uh, ever ridden across this bridge? <laughs> yeah. Wahoo. Um, this is, this is on the way to Massey University, and uh, the reason why I show you this is when I was studying, I, every day I'd sort of ride across the bridge from my flat to the university, and then one morning I, um, I remember sort of riding up next to somebody and thought, oh, why don't I just start 
chatting to them. You know, it's a 10-minute ride. Um, started chatting them. We had a great conversation right at university, and off we went. I liked that so much that the next day I did it again, and the next day I did it again, and it became a bit of a habit for me. And the reason why I share that with you is because 15 years later, when I did the Strength Finder assessment, I discovered that one of my strengths was really around being able to build those relationships. And I'd never been able to put words into it, been able to articulate it. Um, and really what it did was it took something that I just did naturally and thought everybody could do and showed me, oh my gosh, this isn't something that everybody can do, but more important, something that comes naturally to me, I really enjoyed, but something I can bring to the team, the team that I'm part of, and also what I do for work. Um, so what I'm really keen to do today, this is my rough structure. Um, it really, I'm keen to look at some of the challenges that we're seeing out there, given the current climate, particularly around what you're seeing and experiencing working with teams. Um, I'm gonna share with you a model which is really around three C's to do with connectedness, and we'll be putting a strengths lens on top of that. And I also mentioned in the blurb about looking at some of the roadblocks to this. And I was reading a very interesting article on the Gallup um, uh, website that talked about Agile, and, and one of the challenges uh, to do with, with self-managing teams making sure that people are responsible for the concept of engagement. And uh, I found it a really fascinating article to read through. And as part of today, I've got a, a reading list at the end if you want to go and do some extra reading. Um, and at the end, I also um, share the slides if you want to get them. Um, and also I've got a guide uh, that I put together. It's focused around careers, but it's called the Co uh, Confusion to Clarity Guide. And it's really around understanding ourselves and what we do the best. Um, so I'm just going to try something different. Um, what I'm really keen to do today is really add the lens to what you're already doing. Um, and I, I remember I was talking to someone about coaching and they said, oh gosh, you're a coach. And I was like, what does that actually mean? <laughs> um, my view on coaching in my world is it's actually a, a tool that I use. I trained up as a, a result certified coach and was the past president of what was called ICF, which was the International Coach Federation. And then I bumped into this wonderful world of agile, an agile coach and scrum master. And, and uh, it's been a huge learning curve for me, uh, some of the, the language, but, what I've found is, and even looking to more um, preparing for this, is there's a real great synergy between what's being done in Agile and a strength-based approach. And so that's what I'm keen to share with you today. Um, saying that, I'm really keen, if you could just share in the chat box, or just reflect for a moment, even just jot it down if you want a moment to think about it. You know, given the environment that we're in, I'm really keen what you're seeing out there, or what you're experiencing being part of a team. And what do you, just think about what is the number one challenge, if you're thinking about forming teams that you're seeing at the moment um, with the current climate. And I'd just like you to think about that for a moment and just jot down what you're thinking in the chat box, just while I set up something a bit different. So, the chat box has gone nuts. <laughs> uh, Dan, what are you thinking? Yeah, water cooler type conversations. Silos. Yep. Distractions. Thanks, Tony. Distractions I'm picking from maybe being at home? Agile ceremonies is optional. Wow. 
I'm, I'm curious. What Charlotte? Do you know what an agile ceremony is? I'd, I'd love. <laughs> I'd yeah, love to attend cool. one. Right. Great question. Um, so that comes down to the rituals that we do as a team. So that's our daily stand-ups or our tumai, which are really important. Our backlog refinement, our backlog planning sessions so that we know what we're going to be doing um, for the next sort of two weeks or three weeks or however long our sprints are, um, our retrospectives and those sorts of things. So that'll be what we're talking about when we're talking about ceremonies. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> that's my key learning for today. That sounds fun. Um, so quite a few comments. Wow, not being able to pick up on it. Okay, excellent. Um, I'm just going to share my screen and hopefully this works. I'm going to be bold enough to try and uh, share my iPad. Now, I always do this with a bit of bated breath. And it's wonderful use of technology. If it works. Can you see, thumbs up, Nicole, because I can see you. you, you can see that, okay. Um, so there's, there's four things that I, I suppose I've been seeing from some of my coaching clients, and some of them I saw come up there. Um, the interesting thing at the moment that I'm seeing a lot of is pressure. People are being put under a lot more pressure in, at the moment, um, just with the huge amount of change that's taking place and having to navigate things like working from home, um, parents, uh, even if you just look around at the background, I'd just like you to take a moment to look around and pick you know, what's one thing that re you really love around your work environment. And you'll see just by taking that moment, that some of the you know distractions, the pressure that we're um, they're sort of we're sort of under, and we're we're having to do things quite differently uh, at the moment. The next thing that I've been seeing is personalities. And what I mean by that is everybody seems to respond to pressure differently. Um, I have been speaking to some managers of teams, which. Uh, one person I remember saying, I've been really amazed. The team that I didn't think would stand up has stood up, and the people that I thought would stand up haven't stood up. So it's really fascinating. And things like trust, um, people having to, you know, getting stressed out sometimes, some of the, the worries. Um, and it's going to be an interesting one coming back once we come, you know, move from uh, lockdown three to lockdown two with, with people coming back to work. Another one that I've seen is politics. And by politics, um, a, a big focus at the moment that I've seen amongst the management clients I've got is protecting their people with this concept of a sinking lid. They're looking forward around budgets and things are sort of reducing in expenditure and they're having to be efficient and cutting costs. And what that's causing is all sorts of fascinating behavior from people. I remember one person saying there was a couple of opportunities that were like a lolly scramble. And, uh, <laughs> and people sort of doing the weird and wonderful ways of trying to position themselves. Um, I was on a call earlier this morning, which did give me, uh, it reminded me of a great piece of advice though. And that is at this point, it's really important to think about in your work and in your career, how do you make yourself invaluable? And the reason why that is, is because moving forward, it seems to me that there's gonna be a lot, what's it? There's gonna be a lot uh, with, with the predictions around unemployment, you know, that all that wonder, weird, the, uh, the wonderful doom and gloom, um, is that there's gonna be a lot more people sticking in their roles. Um, and it means that transition between roles is, could be um, less. But what, in terms of being invaluable, I'd really encourage you to think about what are the key things that are going to, yeah, what are the key problems that you can help solve? Um, and the last one. was around performance. And the, the really interesting thing about this is that um, 
I've observed that a lot of people haven't actually had a lot taken off their plate at this time. Uh, I was, yet things have been added on. I was speaking to, I was coaching somebody yesterday and he said he's spending 80% of his time on Zoom, on Zoom meetings. And uh, someone mentioned about the water cooler um, issue at the moment. And part of that is that leaders and managers are trying to connect with their teams. Uh, and the outcome of that is a whole lot more meetings. These, so these are four things that I'm observing out there. So, I mean, um, one of the things that, uh, one of the models that I've, I've looked at is thinking about where those, the people and the teams actually are at. Um, and I think of it like going to a swing pool and you see the three different lanes in a swing pool. And there's the fast, the medium, and I put slow, but then I sort of thought, well, they're not actually slow, so I just put low. <laughs> um, and, you know, the, the fast people are the, the people that are standing out. Sorry about my writing. They're standing out. They're the ones that seem to be thriving under the, the sort of environment. The medium is sort of sorting things out or sorted. And the low or slow people, low, call it low, are a bit stressed out. And then there's a fourth group, which is really interesting, which are the people that have checked out. They're not quite, they're sort of uh, not 100% there, uh, you know, they're thinking about other things. And in terms of supporting people at this stage, um, the interesting thing here is that it's a different approach for each of them. For this one, it's to engage them. For this one, it's to encourage, to help explore, and to extend. And by this, what I mean by that is that um, the people at the, who are in the fast lane, if they're not, um, kept up with challenge, they can get bored. But at the moment, some of the people that are struggling um, really need some extra encouragement. So um, just thinking about where the people in the team are, are currently at. Um, let's come back to the, the PowerPoint. Um, but I mean, I suppose what I'm really interested in is if you were to um, think about the percentage of in the, those four categories, um, stressed out, stand out, sorting out, or checked out, when you're approaching a team, um, what percentage do you think uh, in the standout category that you've seen, roughly? You just jot it down in the... Uh, in the chat box, be curious. Yeah, we've seen. Wow, cool. Yeah, so twenty percent something that oh sixty percent. Wow, Rosanna, you're you're obviously working with some excellent teams there. Um, so. My experience is that it has been like a bell curve, uh, you know, the standard bell curve. And the objective of Strength Finder, in my experience, is to try and shift people up that bell curve. So moving people and supporting them so that they go from one of those categories up to the other. Um, I'll just share my screen again. So I seem to one second. So Nicole, could you give me a thumbs up if you can see the uh, PowerPoint? Okay. So one of the great things at this time is we do have the opportunity to help people connect and build resilience. Um, this is a picture of me at Outward Bound. I uh, don't know if anyone has gone on the Outward Bound experience, just uh, um, but it, 
the, the philosophy around Outward Bound is, it was started by a guy called Kurt Hahn. And um, what he did was he was noticing that the sailors who were going out, there were the old ones and the young ones. And it was the old ones that were coming back uh, and the young ones were sort of struggling and perishing at sea. And they looked at that and what they discovered was it was really around things like grit, tenacity, experience. And so Outward Bound was formed to put people into challenging situations, um, but to support them through it is one of the ways to build resilience. And one of the key components to this is how to build connections and relationships. Um, part of my uh, research, uh, this was one of the stats that came up, um, five ways to improve teamwork with scrum method methods uh, that seemed a huge statistic that 86% of the leaders agreed that failing to work as a team was the leading cause of project failure. And from working with a number of teams in the coaching and training work that I've done, um, particularly when there's dysfunction conflict, I uh, can certainly see the, the challenges around that. And so what about this strength finder lens? What, what does it actually look like? Um, how does it fit with agile so um and you know it's, it's fascinating learning the different terminology but uh there was a uh, um one of the, the articles talked about the strength focused teams are a group of imperfect talented contributors valued for their strengths needing one another to realize their individual and team excellence and then some of the terms in Agile around building projects, motivated individuals, high trust, sustainable pace, self-organization and transparency. And it got me wondering, you know, how can you translate the two things over? And it, it seemed like a, a great fit. Um, although for those of you who haven't heard of the Gallup Strength Finder, uh, there's over 22 million people that have done it uh, and it was put together after 40 years of research um, and what it does is it there's 34 character themes they looked at um, what are called talents which are the things that we would do naturally and uh, a sign that you're playing to your strengths at work is that number one you're motivated number two you've got energy uh, number three it comes naturally almost effortless so a bit like when I talked about the example riding the bike um, that's one of the things that you notice when you're doing strengths the funniest thing that I've discovered from working with people whether it be in their leadership their teams their career is people can't see them often and they think that it's just a natural thing I call it blind spots it's really hard to see the things that we do really well um, and uh, there's actually a book, Find Your Why by Simon Sinek. I don't know if you can see it. And it goes through an, ex an exercise that I found fascinating, which was about getting you to write stories. And then I call them success stories or gold nugget stories. But then it doesn't stop there. It gets you to reflect and share that with somebody else. And the funniest thing about that is it's getting the other person to listen for the themes. And so the concept around Strength Finder and, and reflection and when we're using our strengths is that we can't, we, sometimes we can't see the wood for trees. And so by being able to reflect and think about our success stories, it's actually one of the, I, I call it one of the three things that I use to help people get that clarity. Um, so just to give you an example, what I'd love you to do, just take a, give you one to two minutes just to do this exercise. I'd just like you to think of a time in your work uh, over the last six to 12 months where you just felt that connection. You were um, motivated, perhaps you got a pat on the back, time flew, you really enjoyed it. What I'd love you to do is just to take a moment to think and reflect on what you were doing. What sort of project were you working on? 
who were the people that were part of it. And just give you two minutes just to jot it down in a format, which is just jot it down in a couple of sentences. And the biggest thing I would be curious about is what are the actions that you were taking that gave you that sense of satisfaction? So I'll just give you a moment now just to jot down an example. If you could just put yes in the box once you've finished and you got your example. Normally at this point, <laughs> what I'd be doing is getting you to uh, work in twos or threes to share that example and work through it. Um, so just a quick yes once we've finished. Great. Okay, awesome. So. What you've started is a process that I've found the top people do and 80% of people never do when it comes to their career. Uh, and that start to, I call it refine or mine for their gold nugget stories. Um, and it's a reflective process. It's one of the um, key ways of getting a sense of what you do the best. Uh, the other thing that you can do is do an assessment which is where the Gallup Strength Finder comes in. And the third way is to ask some other people. And uh, I don't, you know, you can do that. Some people do it through a 360 degree feedback. My recommended approach initially, which is uh, nice and easy, passes the no-brainer test, is just to ask two or three people that really know who you are. And then the, the focus of that is joining the dots. Um, and the Strength Finder assessment is one really great way to help get that sort of punch and clarity. Um, just show you a quick little bit of a, a result from it that you can get. Uh, right. So this is one of the, um, it's, it's called a, a team strengths table. And along the top um, uh, in, in each of the, the columns are the 34 different character themes. Um, and along the side, uh, the names of each of the participants in the team. Um, so this was, this, this was sort of a, a real life example, but I've actually changed the names. Um, and then, what Gallup does is it, uh, it breaks the, the, the different strengths, the 34, into four key quadrants, which are executing, influencing, relationship building, and strategic thinking. So to give you an example, um, the one that I used going across the, the bridge uh, was one called Wu, winning over others. Which one do you think, which quadrant do you think winning over others would fit into? influencing and you'll find it there at the, the last one um, and once you've done the, the Gallup strength finder report uh, you get you basically um, you can either do it as your top five and your full 34 uh, and it gives you a report explaining just where your uh, different themes fit in um, and as I mentioned before the chance of you having the same strength or top five as somebody else is one in uh, one in 34 million. I like to think of it a bit like a, a chemistry um, equation. Uh, I, I did chemistry and uh, the, the 34th element on the periodic table, can you guess what it is? That's right, selenium. <laughs> Um, and the thing I love about selenium, when I had a quick look at it, is it's actually one of the most versatile elements. And so 
The great thing about um, once we understand those strengths that we've got is that we can actually use it um, to for a number of different ways. One is around helping people and teams leverage their strengths, uh, and the other is helping them lend them to other members of the team. So one of the models I popped together is this one, um, and pretty much what the the strength if we put a strength finder lens over it, um, there's three main components that I see in my training that strength finder allows. Uh, the first is communication. Once we have a common language, uh, which is, and, it, and to some degree it occurs whenever you've done a, a personality profile, you can then talk about that language with other people. It short circuits the process. So a great, I was going to say a great challenging example for me of this was when I was um, challenge, uh, when I was uh, meeting a, a potential client. Uh, we started talking. I was listening to what he had to say, asking all the right questions, listening, listening, and then I got to a point where it was my turn to speak. I started speaking, and the more that I spoke, it's almost like the more he pulled back. Have you had that experience where somebody's never not putting, you know, picking up what you're putting down and you're starting to get more and more uncomfortable? Well, the funniest thing that I did was I, I knew that the, he'd done the strength finder assessment and I said, what are your top five strengths? And he shared them with me. And I said, oh, these are mine. One of them's woo. Guess what he said? He said, Grant, I'm allergic to woo. I was like, oh. Okay, uh, and what that allowed me to do is what we call dial down a strength and dial up another one. Instead of being, you know, using my natural strength, I then sort of had to change tack a little bit. Instead of using what I called woo, I used what I call my lunar strength. I just calmed it down and realized that he was a lot more analytical uh, than I was. Um, so one of the things that allows is for us to communicate. Um, the other thing is it provides clarity. So, I mean, with um, with teams, uh, often people are, are looking at um, what can I do the best in a team, a bit like those the, the strengths table. Um, with, with the ability to, to know what we do best through our strength finder, what we can then do is focus on um, focus on those tasks. Uh, there's a really great um, TED talk by a guy called Shane Lopez, and it's one of the ones that I send out in the, the reading. Um, and it talks about the five secrets of people who love their work. Uh, and can you pick what percentage of people actually have a love affair with their job? Well, the research that he did um, was 13%. And based on the, the Gallup survey, you may have been involved in an engagement survey. Often that's sort of, a, you know, in terms of being fully engaged, those are often the stats that roughly get bandied around. In New Zealand, uh, I've seen some research that were more, was more in the 20% mark. Um, but one of the key things he talks about is the importance of being knowing what our strengths are, and also them being able to do what's called job shaping. Job shaping is where we focus in on the things that we do the best in what I call the wiggle room. Um, and in a team environment, what that's actually doing is it's what I call lending your strengths to somebody else. Um, the last one is confidence. Uh, a lot of people that I uh, speak to on a one-on-one -on -one basis, uh, confidence often comes up um, and the interesting thing about that is um, once we start celebrating and looking at some of the success stories, the confidence level goes from here to here. If you're ever having a bad day or lacking in energy, uh, one of the things that I, I often tell people is, how about finding that favorite person, that favorite client, that favorite team, that favorite team member, and ask them, just pick up the phone, Ask them for a five to 10 minute cup of coffee and just get some feedback on what you've been doing. It's, re it's remarkable how much that actually builds up our confidence. And when we reflect on our success stories, it's exactly the same. 
Um, and so the link between knowing what we do well, which is that clarity, and having that confidence is really around leverage. Because we can then use our strengths and focus them. And the link between confidence and communication is, I call it look, but it's really looking out for opportunity. Where are those opportunities that we can actually put our hand up and, um, but like job shaping, um, having that sort of attitude of looking out for opportunity. So, as I said, there's three parts. Uh, clarity, I do love this, uh, about knowing what you do best. So this is a wonderful example of teamwork. Uh, these two working, working together to wash the dishes. Um, and you may have seen a whole lot of different uh, examples of this uh, around, uh, you know, I, I think I saw one around, um, don't expect an elephant to climb a tree. And if a monkey climbs a tree, of course, it's gonna do it a heck of a lot better. Um, was around bringing out the best which was um, making sure you have multiple points to assess of which um, something like a strength finder assessment is one of them um, this is really you know and it also points out the importance of self-awareness Tom Rath uh, wrote the book about um, discovering your strengths and points out that self-awareness is key to leading effectively um, this was this was this article I mentioned from the Gallup organization uh, around, it was called a manager shaped hole and how to engage self-organizing teams. And it, it was pretty much the, one of the big articles that I found from Gallup around that link between agile and strength finder. Um, the long and the short is it talks about the importance of engagement and that one of the, the risks with the different roles in an agile team is that if it doesn't fall to one per, if it falls if it falls out of the mix because there's multiple people, um, it ran the risk of not being prioritised. So it's it's worth a read, and I'd, I'd actually be really keen if you were to read it and let me know what you think because. Uh, I'll be honest, at the end of it, I was trying to work out, is this just Gallup pushing their barrow and trying to get, <laughs> trying to, you know, focus on, uh, on the Gallup methodology and maybe not sort of giving the Agile methodology kudos? I'd be really keen to, to get your thoughts on that. Um, I talked about that communication piece. Uh, I thought this was this was from one of the Agile websites. It says, this is what I've done since we last met. These are the obstacles. This is the plan today. And I thought of a couple of extra questions, uh, which is, this is where I can lend a hand. And the other is, this is where I can leverage off someone else's strengths. Are you the best person to be doing the job? Uh, and that can save a heck of a lot of time. And confidence. Um, I do love this picture. Uh, around a cat thinking that it's a lion um, but that confidence piece is is definitely a, a, a big part of it um, so i mentioned about roadblocks um, this is sort of one of the uh, really there's there's three roadblocks that i've found uh, around implementing strengths in an organization uh, one was really around that responsibility um, and by responsibility uh, i mean i mean needs to be led from the top uh, and if the leaders are uh, embracing it or using it i'm picking it similar with an agile approach then it won't trickle down to the rest of the team the second is rush uh, it's not i mean there's nothing quite like uh, I, I call it um, assessment bingo think about the number of assessments you've done over the lifetime uh, you could almost if I could see the chat box, I can't actually see the chat box, unfortunately, right now <laughs> because of the, the way that Zoom set up. But I'd, I'd get you to jot down. I am actually curious. If you could pop down the number of assessments you've done over your lifetime, um, whether it's one, two, five, just jot it down in the chat box. I'm really keen to, to hear. Um, and the reason why I say that is rush, where rush fits in is people come in, do an assessment. They love it get all inspired, and then a week later, they've forgotten it. Uh, 
I often go, oh, you've done the Strength Finder assessment. What's your top five? And the number of people that go, oh, I, I can't really remember, is remarkable. And the way to avoid rush is what I call embed it. And that's one of the things that I'm doing at the moment with some organizations, is how do you embed those changes so that it becomes the norm. Uh, and reach. Um, and by reach, I mean rolling it out from one team to another team and at different levels. Um, when I first started with, with Strength Finder in a government department, I ran it with one leadership team and then they loved it so much, they ran it with the next team underneath them and then the next team. And by doing that, it allowed the whole team, all the different levels, to be able to talk the same language. So, um, as, I, as I finish, um, there really is you know, the three C's around helping using Strength Finder to build connection and connectedness. Um, they, and I mean, by understanding what we actually do the best, uh, it allows us to, I suppose, lend and leverage those to other people. Um, this is one of the link list I can share. Um, I can send this out to you um, from some of the research that I've done. Um, there's the Gallup article. Um, there is also the TED talk by Shane Lopez and a couple of others that I thought were very interesting and had some great stats. Uh, and this is a finish. Um, if you'd like uh, to contact me or if you'd like that free guide uh, called Confusion to Clarity, um, you can just go to my website, uh, which is grantverhoven.com. Uh, and then forward slash guide. And you can just download it. Just download it. Um, there's a few questions there. I'd love to, to hear if you've got um, any thoughts or if you're leading a team or curious about your career, just jot that down in, your, um, in, in the comments. Uh, and as I said, I, I do a lot of training and coaching. Um, but if you just want a copy of the free guide, um, just go to grantverhoven.com forward slash guide. Uh, and there's also my email there, which is grant at grantverhoven.com. Or if you're on LinkedIn, I'd love to hear from you uh, via LinkedIn. Just make sure you put in the comment uh, when you're inviting a little trick. Make sure you personalize your comment so that I know where you're from. Because uh, I don't know if you're like me at the moment, it seems like uh, with the lockdown, there's a heck of a lot more people sending out uh, <laughs> um, spammy uh, LinkedIn requests. So um, I just want to. Close this down and I'd love to, um, in the chat box, if there's any questions that you've got, I'm just going to, I'd love for, to, uh, for you to just pop them down at the chat box at this point um, and we'll have five minutes for, uh, five, ten minutes, depending on how many questions you've got, I'd love to be able to answer them. A few people have had to cruise, um, but yeah, well, yeah, we do have a few minutes for questions. So if anyone has any, we've had um, quite a few requests for your um, presentation and whatnot grants. So um, perhaps you and I can chat afterwards and get a copy of that. Yep, sure. Cool. I'm amazed, Russell, you've done 20, if you're still here, 20 or so. It uh, requires uh, a box of chocolates, I think. We do have a question from Susan. Um, any resistance from people not getting enough strength finder approach value? Hmm. I'm just making sure I understand that question. Um, so I think what I'm hearing from you, Susan, is if people have done the strength finder, they're not getting value from it and then have resistance to it. Um, I'll make a few assumptions here, but the, the biggest thing that I found with any assessment is the debrief. Uh, a debrief, uh, anybody can do the assessment. In fact, you can go online and do the, the assessment. Aha, uh -huh. they don't agree with the string finder results. I don't believe in it. Aha, uh -huh. thank you for clarifying. Um, it's a really good question uh, because what I've found is number one, people seem to default to their weaknesses rather than their strengths. And I'd say in a good 80 to 90% of cases, when people get their strength finder result, they go, wow, that's actually, 
that's spot on, or I can see that. Um, there are instances, like any any assessment, where I have had people go, oh, that one came out of a bit of left field, or that didn't really fit for me, or not too sure, or maybe they've done it twice. Oh, I did that five years ago, and I, I did it now, and there was a couple of different results. Um, and this is where I think the importance of a debrief comes in. Um, I, I think it might have reminded me back into my psychology days at university in terms of ethics. <laughs> and, and the challenge, the biggest risk around doing any assessment is putting us in a box that doesn't fit. So I love the, the saying that if the hat doesn't fit, hand it back. And part of the debrief of um, Strength Finder is, is really fleshing out what those results mean. And then even more importantly, once you flesh them out, how do you get some quick wins from it? Because uh, being able to say, oh, I'm, I've got context woo and learner is my top five, uh, and my top five doesn't mean anything. Uh, it's how do I then put them into play in what I do day to day? Hope that answers your question, Susan. So, there sometimes is resistance, but I've found the biggest value add is unpacking it with somebody and then personalizing it to what they're doing day to day. All right, thanks. We had another question from uh, Bawish. Uh, communication and co-location, agile principles in context with the current situation. Bawish, do you wanna maybe just unmute and just sort of uh, talk us through that one? Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, so now I was, I was just going through and, and looking at that uh, communication uh, structure and uh, against Agile principle says co-location. So now the situation has changed. Co-location uh, theory is being challenged uh, I know, due to several regions. So where do you see those um, uh, things contradicting and how they are complementing each other now? So sorry, Bawish, could you reframe the question so I understand it? So, uh, I heard yeah. about... so the question is about uh, our communication challenge uh -huh. and Agile principle uh, co-location, where Agile principle says co-location is very much important and uh, detrimental uh, to, for a team. Where uh -huh. do you see uh, that situation or that principle with current context? Sounds to me like that's an agile question. Would that be right? Uh, with our strength, the, which you just presented now about. Sure, yeah. So, so within the, I mean, uh, within the strength finder, you might say methodology or paradigm, co-location isn't necessarily the, it, it's, it's not a key component of it. Um, the key component of the strength finder methodology is really around uh, understanding what what strengths we bring to the table, what we do best, and and building that self awareness around first ourselves as an individual, and then that then translates into a team. So the concept of co location from a strength finder point of view, I haven't seen a lot that where it sort of talks about it, other than I suppose I then translate that to just general principles of human interaction, um, which a bit like at the start, some of the, the challenges, I love the one about the water cooler, is that you know we're trying to interact here via a webinar. Now, that's fantastic in terms of information, um, but it also provides a challenge, doesn't it? Which is how to keep people engaged, you know, in terms of breaking people up. Um, is it good? Yes. Is it better? Yeah, it probably could have been better. <laughs> um, you know, always a tough critic. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Love to get your feedback. Um, is it the best? Well, in my opinion, and it's just a personal preference, I'm a raving extrovert, so I'm trying to, I've, I've been finding lockdown incredibly difficult um, because I'd much, much prefer to be in front of you. Um, so uh, my wife's an introvert and she's probably coming out rosy. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, in short, the wish that co-location doesn't come into play from what I can see in the strength finder methodology per se, but it'd be interesting to explore what that means from an agile approach, I think, because it's a really good question. Um, I don't know if we've got time to, someone who's an agile specialist 
<laughs> we probably don't have time for that. Yep. We've got quite a few people who are dropping it's a good off question. Now, head to head to different meetings. But yeah, okay. perhaps one that we could explore. But we should, perhaps it's a discussion that you could post on our meetup page um, and get some people involved or even in our Slack channel and maybe um, crowdsource some interesting ideas there as well. Um, team, we've got a couple more questions, but unfortunately we're not going to have enough time to answer those today. So what I'd like to suggest is that um, Grant and I um, get answers to those um, and perhaps we drop them on the comments for this meetup on the meetup page um, so that we, um, yeah, so that we can talk those through. Um, so if you've got any others, feel free to comment on the meetup page and I'm sure Grant will be able to just pop in there and answer any other final questions. Um, Grant's just dropped his email address um, in the chat as well. We will be sharing um, a copy of the presentation which has all the links. Um, do highly recommend downloading the guide as well that Grant's referenced as well in his talk. But um, Grant just wanted to say a massive thanks to you for coming to talk to us about strengths. Um, I've learned a lot today and it's actually made me realize that um, quite often we don't think about what the strengths are that we bring to our day but we think about what the weaknesses are that we bring instead and I think um, in the in the current environment I think it's really important from a mental health perspective that we're actually thinking about what are the good things that we bring and what are the things that makes make us sit up and feel comfortable and happy with what it is that we're doing yeah and, and can I just say thank you Charlotte and to the organizing committee <laughs> I know that that the efforts you've put in to put this sort of um these sort of things on uh, in, the, in this uh, environment and also just just the communication has been top notch so thank you very much pleasure thank you for coming thank you appreciate it hey everybody well we're gonna we're gonna call it here now um but thanks again for coming along keep a lookout on our um, meetup page we are going to be doing some more online events um over the however long it needs to be and the organizing team are getting together next week hopefully to talk about uh what agile Wally might need to look like in the future um if you've got any ideas if there's any um subjects that you're interested in hearing about let us know um you can either come to us through meetup or get us on slack but um thanks everybody um for joining us um over your lunch break have a good rest of the day and we'll see you all soon Kakite. <laughs>